the madman. Welcome to another Kobolds and Catacombs card review. We've got 13 cards to look at, and they're all very interesting this time around. Lots of unique mana to stat line ratios. So let's begin with Grizzled Guardian. 8 mana, 3, 5. Wow, that's a different stat line. Has taunt. Death Rattle, recruit two minions that cost four or less. On paper, it seems like the stat line, well, obviously it's terrible. However, I will also say, theoretically, getting the Death Rattle of recruiting two minions, if you got two four drops, that is getting a lot of value. It's like 12 mana worth of card in an eight mana card. We've had similar ideas before, in the sense that Ultimate Infestation is theoretically like about 23 mana worth of cards. So the main problem right now is it seems very tough to find the deck that this goes in. Now the good news is most druid decks don't actually run any minions less than four already. You can get your Tar Creeper, which is great. You can get Fandral Staghelm. You can put in Mire Keepers, but that's the problem. Like those don't look that inspiring. This is a possibility if there are good four drops. Maybe some sort of beast druid, but that would run a bunch of 1, 2, and 3s. Arcane Artificer, 1 mana, 1, 2, Mage Elemental card. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, gain armor equal to its cost. 1 mana for 5 armor has been shown not to be good due to Iron Hide. Now granted, that is the class that can gain armor. Other classes might be more interested in 1 mana gain health, like 5 armor. You can now do something like Arcane Artificer Flame Strike and that's one mana, gain seven armor, and you get a one, two out on the board, and you continue putting that threat out of gaining more armor. If they can't kill you the turn that they gain armor, you basically gained 10 armor, or nine armor, because they have to use two damage to kill the arcane artificer. Maybe the elemental tag is enough to put it into elementals. Maybe you put it on one copy of it. And it's still a one drop too. With the mage ability to fire blast things, it can test two health minions. So, very cool card. Speaking of Elemental Mage, Lesser Ruby Spellstone is a card tailor-made for the Elemental Mage deck. Two mana, add one random mage spell to your hand, but you play two elementals and you upgrade it. Add two random mage spells, and then add three random mage spells. A Kabbalist Tome for two mana. That's actually really insane, and maybe we'll continue the mage free to play run? <laughs> because... That is two cards right there that go right into Mage Elemental. Now the main problem with the entire Mage Elemental deck though, is it still got outvalued by Jade Druid as well as Raza Priest. Is a three minute discount on a Kabbalist Tome after you jump through a few hoops enough value to push Elemental Mage into the forefront? Even if it doesn't work out this particular block, the next expansion, when Raza rotates out and when the Jades rotate out, Elemental Mage could be really good. Explosive Ruins! Haven't seen a good secret in a while, but this one seems like it's going to be really good in Secret Mage. Three mana, Mage, Secret. After your opponent plays a minion, deal six damage to it and any excess to their hero. This is really efficient because, well, it'll almost always just kill any minion. It's like pre-casting Fireball. One note of clarification, if your opponent plays a Divine Shield minion, the Explosive Ruins will deal damage equal to the Divine Shield minion's health and then deal any excess to their hero, which means Explosive Ruins will never kill a Divine Shield minion. But you can always get around Mirror Energy by playing something small like Firefly. But now you are really efficiently killing that minion with exact damage and then you're dealing any excess damage to the face. And Secret Mage is a tempo deck, and tempo decks tend to want face damage. It seems like Explosive Ruins could see play in that particular aggressive Secret Mage deck. Worth mentioning is that this gets around Ice Block as well. They trigger it on their turn when Ice Block is not active. I expect this to be pretty savage. Sonya Shatter Dancer, the rogue legendary minion, 3 mana 2-2. Two, two. After a friendly minion dies, add a 1-1 one, one copy of it to your hand, it costs 1. The card that I actually compared this with which I don't, I haven't seen that many people compare it with, is it's similar to Cult Master, which is a four mana four two. After a friendly minion dies, you just draw a card. So the question is, is adding a one one copy and having it cost one better than a card? And there's no clear answer there, I would say. Really good with Bone Mare, Vile Spine Slayer, Swashburglar, Prince Keliseth, Stone Tusk Boar. Patches. 
card is absolutely insane with Aya as well as Jade Swarmer, uh, but especially Aya. And it's uh, cheap enough that you can actually play it alongside other things, but it requires quite a bit of setup. There have been some ideas about how you can build a rogue quest deck, which turns out to just be a control rogue, and then you just put in a copy of the quest, which you might even mulligan, and then a copy of boar, and then Sonya Shadow Dancer. Uh, your boar charges into a minion, you get the boar back, you play the boar, you charge it, you play the boar, you play the boar, you play the boar, you quest complete the quest with just Sonya and a boar. I think that's impractical though, and probably more practical is just to put it into some sort of more control oriented, possibly tempo rogue transitions into having even more value. Definitely a lot of possibilities, just important not to underestimate how hard it is sometimes to have a friendly minion die, which means you have to kind of be winning already, and then you have to play, uh, pay three mana for a 2-2 to not further develop the board, and then trade in your minions. Harder than you would think, which is why Cult Master hasn't seen that much play. Lesser Pearl Spellstone. Another value card here. Two mana to summon a two-toon spirit with taunt. Already, Frost Wolf Grunt, you have been kind of trumped with the spellstone. You gain a few health, you start doing a two mana for a four-four taunt, then a two mana for a six-six taunt. That's really, really strong. Now the main problem is you have to restore three health to get these to upgrade, and there's currently no paladin deck out there which consistently gains health. True Silver Champion does gain two health per swing, so one use of a full True Silver Champion gaining two health twice will upgrade the Spellstone. The upcoming card, which restores health, a really good combination with this card. A lot of ways to upgrade it. The only question is, is it good enough to compete with the current decks out there, which just outvalue value decks so hard? Jade Druid and Raza Priest. We'll see. Benevolent Jin, 3 mana 2 4 elemental. At the end of your turn, restores 3 health to your hero. A great combination with Lesser Pearl Spellstone. And this card is actually really, really insane. Back in the day, I did try to play that Control Mage with the same card, pretty much, 3 mana 2 4 Illuminator. At the end of your turn, restore 4 health if you have a secret in play. This is just unconditional restore 3 health and is absolutely amazing against aggro decks. Now, contrary to all the laughter, Aggro actually did die during the last expansion. They're mostly tempo decks now. So the main problem with Keliseth, Rogue, and Token Druid, which are the two closest to Aggro decks right now, and, and Tempo Mage, all those decks will try to clear your board as a priority if it's efficient to do so, and then they'll hit your face. And against that, a 3 mana 2-4 just isn't quite that good. Uh, that's the reason why this card may not be that great. Because against an aggro deck, then this is 3 mana to gain 7 health and you're dealing 2 damage to a minion. But against a tempo deck, and that's the important distinction, it's simply a 3 mana 2 4 and a minor speed bump. In quite a few matchups, tempo decks will play almost equivalently to an aggro deck, but where you're going to find out that they're not the same is when you play Benevolent Gen, and it's not quite as good as you think it is in the present meta. Really cool card though. And in the right meta, absolutely insane. Even not in the right meta, it's just a solid card. But the question is, in this meta, are solid cards good enough? Uh, this has been the case for a few of the cards that I've already reviewed here. Solid value cards, and they're costed very, very uh, aggressively. As in, they are worth more than the mana that they cost. But can you beat Jade, and can you beat Raza Priest with it? We'll see. Temporis! 7 mana 6-6 six, six, Priest Dragon. Uh, now that card sucks. Battlecry, your opponent takes 2 turns, then you take 2 turns. I'm going to take a page from a Redditor who made this comparison. So there are 3 situations in Hearthstone that you're in. Uh, 1. You're ahead. And if you're ahead, then giving your opponent 2 turns in a row could actually surprisingly lose you the game, and you're ahead anyway, so why are you doing this? Two. You're even. Again, you could actually lose the game by doing so. You're playing a 7 mana 6 6. You don't really have anything to take advantage of. And then three, you're behind, which means you're just going to lose. So the key to Temporis is to somehow play it alongside, like, right after you've board cleared them and they haven't done anything that aggressive. Then you play Temporis, and then they have to spend a turn 
developing the board and they have to spend a turn attacking you, sure. Uh, but really, if you have a situation in which you're playing a 7-drop into a mostly empty board on the opponent's side, I can think of many different plays you can make other than this meme play. But if you want a meme, Temporis is a great card for you. A good card for if they're almost out of cards in their hand. Good card for if your opponent has no board, but that's not really saying much because most cards are good cards when they cost 7 mana and your opponent is almost out of a hand and almost don't have a board. Pure meme card, but great meme card. Psychic Scream, 7 mana shuffle all minions into your opponent's deck. Uh, now here we don't have a meme priest spell. Uh, that actually looks like a pretty good priest spell. Actually looks like it could be a insane priest spell. It's Twisting Nether, except it costs one less, and it doesn't trigger death rattles. The downside, downside in quotation marks, is it shuffles the minions into the opponent's deck, which means that if you are going for a control strategy or a fatigue strategy, Psychic Scream probably is not the card for you. However, if you're playing a Raza Priest and your goal is to like survive and then be able to machine gun your uh, opponent down, Psychic Scream might be really good for you. Psychic Stream, Scream uh, fills in that 7 spot, which Raza Priests don't really have a card on right now. And it has the additional benefit that it can dilute your opponent's deck. If you Psychic Scream in the late game their Firefly away, they do not want to draw Firefly on turn 8. And even better, if you Psychic Scream their 1-2, uh, the Flame Elemental, then they're drawing a 1-mana one 1-2 one card. If you're up against Paladin and you Psychic Scream away some Silver Hand Recruits, then they are going to spend a turn eventually drawing Silver Hand Recruit. Basically turns all of their cards into Weasel Tunneler. So a great Control Priest card, though expensive. And also does not fit the specific Control Priest who wants to draw out the game to the end which is quite a few control priests, so kind of specifically a card designed for Raza Priest. Wow, how generous, Blizzard. Grumble World Shaker. The Shaman Legendary, six mana, seven, seven. Elemental. Battlecry, return your other minions to your hand, they cost one. So this is a card that's supposed to really push Shaman Elemental here, and it certainly accomplishes that because the stat line is great and the effect is a lot of value. It's a card that you probably, you may want to play on six mana, and then you just get a seven seven. Maybe you return some of your weaker elementals that you've played up until then, and then you set up for your blaze caller. But the real value play is you play your blaze caller on turn seven, and then on a turn eight, you play your grumble world shaker, you return your blaze caller, and then you can immediately play the blaze caller again. Ideally, you've traded that blaze caller into another minion, damaging it, and then you get it back with full health. So, a really, really good card for those decks, but I asked the same question. In this specific meta, is this type of value enough to overcome Jade Druid and Raza Priest? And we'll find out. Arcane Tyrant! 5 mana, 4, 4, costs 0 if you've cast a spell that costs 5 or more this turn. One deck that immediately comes into mind on this card could just fit into is Jade Druid. And of course, past that there's a bunch of other decks out there, like Mage. And getting a free 4-4, four, four, that's actually pretty powerful. I can see the world where Arcane Tyrant is played. Uh, there has been some comparisons to Happy Ghoul, where Happy Ghoul is a 0 mana 3-3 three, three if you've healed, but the thing is casting a spell that costs 5 or more, it's more fluid, I should say. It's not easier than healing. Because as a priest, you have to spend 2 mana to use your lesser heal, so that's like a 2 mana 3-3, three, three, and you have to heal yourself, which doesn't affect the board. But when you're casting a spell that's 5 or more, that's generally because you actually want to do it, and then it's like, here, have a 4-4 four, four with it. With Warlock, you had your Siphon Soul to gain the health, and you had like Drain Soul, but now instead of Siphon Soul and then getting a 3-3, three, three, you could get a 4-4. Four, four. So yeah, I see a lot of decks that Arcane Tyrant could make its way in. Grand Archivist, 8 mana 4-7, at the end of your turn, cast a spell from your deck, targets chosen randomly, saying this right now because it's a commonly asked question, the card does remove the spell from your deck. This card is deceptively powerful because the stat line is like decent, it's like worth about 5 minutes worth of stats, which means when you combine with the fact that you're actually playing a spell for free and it's casting, uh, you only need about a 3 mana spell in order to break even. 
or have a great effect. Not to mention it keeps giving this effect afterwards and 7, man uh, seven health is not easy to remove. The real bonus is when you get a spell that costs more than 3, uh, such as Flame Strike or Blizzard. We're looking for a spell that does not care that the targets are chosen randomly, that's why you'll build your deck around it. Like even Mind Control is perfect, because Mind Control always targets an enemy. Maybe it sees play in some sort of Big Priest deck, which is a different Big Priest, because you can just put in cards like Free From Amber as well as Mind Control in there. Could be great with Call of the Wild. Just think about all those big spells out there. So Grand Archivist is definitely a card that you'll need to build your deck specifically around, but we've already seen a few cards that want you to build your deck around spells, so there might be some sort of new deck brewing. Gonna have to see all the other cards, but this could create a new type of deck. We'll see. And we have King Togwoggle for our great finish. 8 mana 5-5? Five, five? Battle cry, swap decks with your opponent, give them a ransom spell to swap back. Welcome to the ultimate meme card. If this did not give a ransom, it would be absolutely insane. And because it gives a ransom, it's not completely insane because you've only gained three mana on the opponent if you play King Togwoggle and they just follow up with King's Ransom. And it's not like they have to play King's Ransom immediately either. Uh, there's a few ways that you can build your deck that you really want to King Togwoggle them. One is by exploring N'Goro and then you King Togwoggle to give them the N'Goro deck. Maybe you renounce Darkness and then your deck isn't very good and then you King Togwoggle them. Actually doesn't sound bad at all. I mean, outside of the fact that you can't get rid of King's Ransom. Uh, you can draw out your deck really fast with cards like Cold Light Oracle, and then you play King Togwoggle, and then you give them no deck, and then you take theirs. But the main problem is you have to get rid of the King's Ransom as well. So the thing to think about with King Togwoggle then is how can you... You have to go through your Kobold mine here, and King Togwoggle is a very smart Kobold. You can see he's got a lantern protecting his candle. Wow. How do you manage to break the synergy here? One, you're playing mage, and you have counterspell or mana bind out. If you counterspell King's Ransom, then they're stuck with your deck. If you mana bind King's Ransom, then you can play King's Ransom back at them, and then you get their deck, and then they get your deck again. Uh, the second way is to try to mill the King's Ransom by playing King Togwoggle and then overdrawing them that same turn. So that would be with something like Double Naturalize after King Togwoggle. Really, really interesting card. Suitable for the King of Cobalts. See how you can break this symmetrical effect. So that's it for this set of cards. The common theme for all of these is there's a lot of potential value if you build your deck around them and the recruit mechanic, and it seems like there's a lot of recruiting spells from your deck type of mechanic, is clearly meant for you to build your deck around uh, gathering immense value by basically getting more mana worth of value from your recruit and from recruiting spells than you know the spell cost and the minion cost would normally give you. But the common recurring theme is, is that enough value to outmatch Jade Druid and to beat Raza Priest? And we'll see.